This is part 30 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss attribute routing introduced in ASP.NET Web API 2. Let's understand attribute routing with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. What I have done so far is created a new Web API project. I named it Web API. The first thing that we are going to do is add a student class. So let's right click on the models folder, add a class file. Let's name our class file student. The student class is going to have two properties. The first property type is integer and it's going to be ID. The second property is name and its type is going to be string. So that's our student class. The next thing that we are going to do is add students controller to our controllers folder. So let's right click on the controllers folder, add and we want to add a controller. And the type of controller that we're going to add is Web API 2 empty controller. Let's name our controller students controller. And within the students controller, the first thing that we are going to do is create a static list of students. So let's create a static variable of type list of student. Remember, this student class is present in a different namespace, Web API dot models. So let's bring that namespace in. Let's call the variable students. Now let's build a list here. Let's create a new student object and remember the student object has got two properties ID and name. Let's create a couple of more students. In the interest of time I have already typed the required code so let's copy and paste it right here. So at the moment we've got three students. Now let's include a public method here which is going to return i enumerable of student objects. Let's call this method get and all it's going to do is return whatever students list that we have within the static variable students. Let's include another get method. Now this method is going to return us a single student object. So this method will get student by ID. So from the students list, give me the first or default student where student ID matches with the ID that we are passing into this get method. Let's have one more public method here and this method is going to return I enumerable of string objects and let's call this method get student courses. Now each student can be enrolled into a list of courses and we want this method to return the list of courses by student ID. So it's going to have a parameter ID and what we want to do is hard code that list here. So if ID equals 1, so whatever ID we are passing, if that is 1, then we want to return a new list of string objects and let's build our list of courses here. So let's say student with ID 1 is enrolled in C-sharp, ASP.NET and SQL Server. And let's do the same thing for student ID 2 and 3 in the interest of time. I have already typed the code so let's copy and paste that right here. So student ID 2 is enrolled in these courses and student ID 3 is enrolled in these courses. Now if you look at the students and student courses we have hard coded them within our application. In a real world application we would be getting the students and student courses from a database table. To keep this example simple I have hard coded them here. So at the moment we've got three methods within our students controller. This get method is going to return us the list of all students. This method is going to return us a student by ID and this method is going to return us student courses by ID. Let's run our application by pressing Control F5 and navigate to slash API slash students. Notice we get the list of students as expected. So this URL right here slash API slash students it's mapped to this controller action method within our students controller. So this mapping is done by the default route that we already have in place. So we have the default route 
within our web API config.cs file. We have that default route here. This routing mechanism is called as convention based routing. And this route is created by the web API project template for us automatically when we created this new project. So with this convention based routing and with the students controller in place, this URI right here slash API slash students is mapped to this get controller action method. Now let's also pass student ID in the URI. So we have now slash API slash student slash one. So we expect this URI to be mapped to this action method which is taking student ID and then return us that specific student. But look at what happens when we issue this request. We get an error and look at what the error says. It says multiple actions were found that match the request. So basically it's saying within students controller it has got this get method and we also have got get student courses within that same students controller and to this URI it does not know between these two methods which method to use. So both the methods start with the word get and both of them have got the ID parameter. So the framework is confused for this URI which action method to use. Now we can very easily resolve this by using attribute routing and here is what we want to do. We want this URI slash API slash student slash one. This one to be mapped to this controller action method and then return us that specific student. But on the other hand along with the student ID if I also specify courses in the URI like this then we want all courses to which that student ID 1 has subscribed to. Okay, so this should be mapped to this controller action method and then obviously it's going to return us the student courses into which that specific student has enrolled into. So to achieve this all we have to do is decorate this method with the route attribute. So let's use the route attribute and we want this action method to be mapped to API slash students slash and we are going to pass an ID parameter and then followed by that we are going to have this literal string courses so if we pass one as the ID then we want that specific student courses okay so let's give our solution a build and issue a request to this URI slash API slash students slash one slash courses. Notice we get student one courses as expected. So this URI is mapped to this controller action method get student courses. Notice this method is decorated with route attribute. So that URI is mapped to this action method using attribute routing. And now if you issue a request to slash one without that literal string courses notice we get student one details so this URI slash API slash student slash one this is mapped to this controller action method and notice on this method we're not using the route attribute but still the mapping is working because behind the scenes it's using convention based routing so what is attribute routing using the route attribute to define routes is called attribute routing what are the advantages of using attribute routing? Attribute routing gives us more control over the URIs than convention based routing. Creating URI patterns like hierarchies of resources. For example, students have courses, departments have employees. Creating patterns like this is very difficult with convention based routing. Whereas with attribute routing, all you have to do is use the route attribute as shown right here. So here we are creating a pattern. Students have courses. It's that easy. Whereas with convention based routing, it's a bit difficult and does not scale very well. So how to enable attribute routing? In Web API 2, attribute routing is enabled by default. So this line right here, config.map HTTP attribute routes, this enables attribute routing. So if you look at our Web API config.cs file, notice we have that line right here, which enables attribute routing. If you remove this line or comment this line, then attribute routing is not going to work. 
can be used both attribute routing and convention based routing in a single web API project. Yes, both of them can be used in a single web API project. The controller action methods that have the route attribute uses attribute routing and the others without the route attribute uses convention based routing. Thank you for listening and have a great day.